Hi, my name is uh, Dr. Faria Bukhari, Dr. Fab. I'm right now we're here at Phoenix City Hall to protest against Biden administration for uh, violating the United Nations resolutions uh, by committing to attend the G20 that has been illegally scheduled to meet at the Indian occupied Kashmir this coming September. Um, I've been here multiple times trying to remind the American people and the US government of its responsibilities to abide by the uh, US Constitution that condemns the human rights violations happening anywhere in the world and that asks the US government to drive its policies to respect the international human rights charter. However, in the last many years, we have noticed that the US government has been going rogue against the United States Constitution and doing things that are in complete violation of the International Charter of Human Rights. We saw the Iraq invasion that was dictated by a few corporate elite in bed with evil cults who wanted global domination. And we saw what happened. We saw the Syria crisis. We saw the Yemen crisis. We are still suffering from the sequelae of these crises that were brought upon voluntarily by the governments of US against the United States Constitution, against the interests of the American people. Today I stand here to request my American brothers and sisters to stand up in front of Biden administration and demand from the Biden administration to boycott the G20 that is being scheduled to be held in the Indian occupied Kashmir. As per the United Nations resolutions, the Indian occupied Kashmir is still a disputed territory. It's a conflict zone where the right of self-determination of millions of Kashmiris has been subjugated, has been oppressed, where journalists are being detained extrajudicially, where young Kashmiri children have been kidnapped and tortured and killed, where unlabeled mass graveyards have been erected for years, where Kashmiri women have been raped as a weapon of war. This has been written up by the majority of the global human rights associations, including Amnesty International, including the United Nations, including the Human Rights Watch. I am not here saying things from the figment of my imagination. My American brothers and sisters, you are most welcome to look up the United Nations Human Rights Commission report on what India has been doing in Kashmir all these years. There have been documentation of rapes committed by the Indian Army. There have been documentations of extrajudicial killings. There have been documentations of kidnappings of young children. There have been documentations of slaughter, massacre, and mass graveyards being committed by the Indian Army and the Indian government. So now, India has the audacity to go against the United Nations resolutions and try to conduct 
an international platform like G20 in a disputed conflict zone like the Indian occupied Kashmir, Sirinagar. And guess what? Who volunteers to attend the G20 first? No one else but the president of the free people of US. Yes, your president is going to violate United Nations resolutions in your name, on your taxpayer dollars. He's going to go to Sirinagar and attend a conference to dictate and tell the world that you can go to hell to dictate to the United Nations that you can go to hell. We don't care about your resolutions. We don't care about your Human Rights Commission reports. We don't care about what you stand for. This is your president. This is your government. You saw what happened in Maui. When Iraq was burning, and Iraqi children were getting bombed, you didn't do anything to stop this. When Syria crisis started and unfolded, and millions of Syrian kids got displaced from their homes, were orphaned, you didn't do anything about it. When the Yemen crisis unfolded, and the Yemen wars was precipitated by the US government to destabilize the region in order to gain control. You didn't, do any, you didn't do anything about it. And millions of Yemeni children are now suffering from mass starvation. When Libya got invaded in the name of democracy and freedom, you didn't do anything about it. An entire region got destabilized. When Palestine gets burned and its children get maimed, mutilated, and kidnapped against the international charter, you are not willing to do anything about it. When the people of Kashmir and the children of Kashmir are getting abducted or getting assaulted by rubber pallets that are making them blind, or injured permanently, you decided to look away. But guess what? Now your government is coming for your children. My dear American brothers and sisters, look at what happened in, the, in Moi. I warned you about this, that after droning children in Afghanistan and Pakistan, Waziristan, they are now coming for your children. Your government is now lynching your American children alive. After drenching their hands in a bloodbath of children globally, your American government, your evil American government cult is now out there for your children. 1,000 children of Hawaii, Hawaii are reported as missing. There is a grave concern that they were lynched alive. When the butcher of Gujarat comes here, Modi, he just came here the other day, he gets a VIP welcome. This guy had the audacity of lynching Muslims alive in Gujarat and at one point he was forbidden from entering the United States of America. But Biden has been kissing his feet just in a bed to conquer Taiwan. We all saw what happened in Ukraine. We are at a nuclear flashpoint in Ukraine thanks to the Biden administration. What could have been handled diplomatically was allowed to run chaotic. We now have a major war and grappling. Two thirds of the world where nations are polarizing into two sides. 
And that is not good for the future of this world. Not just US, but the rest of the world. Kashmir has been a nuclear flashpoint for many years. I warned you about this, but the Biden administration is obsessed with trying to win the next year elections against Donald Trump that they've tried to arrest and tried to detain to eliminate all kinds of opposition in the next two elections. They are bidding to have another invasion on same lines as Ukraine in South China Sea, and they're willing to go to any length in order to win the next two elections. They're even willing to compromise the future and present of not just this country, but the rest of the world. Do you know what is the prices of gas today? It was 4.49, right? This is the United States of America. I'm not talking about the rest of the world. Inflation has hit the home ground hard. Your government, was not satisfied with the bloodbath of the Palestinian children, with the bloodbath of the Kashmiri children. Now your government is coming for your own children born and raised in America. And if you don't wake up now, it will be too late like it was in Moi. 1,000 American people, children mainly, have gone missing, and there is a grave concern that they were burnt alive in a bid by the corporate elite of US to grab the land of the poor people. They raised the entire region to ashes just to have control just to be able to occupy it. So when foreign occupations, invasions were not able to satisfy their thirst, they are now willing to occupy your homes by killing, maiming, mutilating, lynching your children alive. So when I stand over here today, I'm here to warn you to request you humbly to kindly stand up against what is not right, against what is evil. You didn't say anything about the Iraq invasion, look what happened. You didn't say anything about the Syrian invasion, look what happened. You didn't say anything about the Palestinian invasion, You'd say, look what happened. You have been ignoring the issue of Kashmir and look what's happening. Now India is obsessed with making its illegal occupation internationally legitimate. So what is the gain India is going to have by daring to go against the United Nations resolutions and daring to conduct an international G20 summit in Sirinagar? What do you think India is out after? They want to tell the world that you can go to hell They want to tell the United Nations that you can go to hell, that Sirinagar, Indian occupied Kashmir, belongs to them only. And they are going to try, and they have been successfully trying to get acknowledgement by the top 10 to 15 most powerful and affluent nations of the world. They're trying to drive this world towards another world order where it is okay to get away with human rights violations, where you can be written up by the United Nations Human Rights Commission for the rapes you did, for the abductions you did, for the manslaughter you did.
being out here in this heat. It's water and granola bars. Thank you, I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks Good luck, so. ma'am. Thank you. We have a chance right now to try to stop India from going against the United Nations resolutions. Your own children are in danger. What happened in Moi could happen to people of Arizona, could, ha could happen to the children of any state of the United States. You have to tell your government that either you commit yourself to the US Constitution or you can go to hell in the next elections. If you claim to be the strongest democracy of the world, or you are trying to be a good, powerful democracy, then you cannot shut your eyes to the open, blatant violation of the United Nations resolutions being committed by your own president. Instead of condemning the act of Modi Gujarat Pucha, that he is not just trying to forcefully annex Kashmir to India against the United Nations resolutions. Instead of condemning Modi for trying to conduct an international summit in the India unoccupied Kashmir, that is a disputed territory against the United Nations resolutions, Biden is willing to go to any length to do whatever it takes to win the next year's elections against Donald Trump. Biden has unconstitutionally tried to eliminate every segment of opposition to make the ground clear for him to be able to win the next year's elections. He has arrested one of the most popular leaders that US has ever seen. He was your ex-president and he got arrested the other day. Right now, your institutions are working against you. Right now, your government is working against you. Right now, all your democratic bylaws are being smashed to dirt because Biden wants to win the next year's elections. U.S., like I said before, is in a state of communism. If you say anything against the Biden administration, like Donald Trump has been saying, he's been saying no to the war in Ukraine. He has been asking for peace mediation. He says, I repeat, Donald Trump said he could end the Ukrainian war within one week and bring peace to this world. And this is why he's been arrested. Because the corporate elite of the military industrial complex do not want global peace. If Trump had been the president of the United States, Moi would have never happened. Those thousand children gone missing, being feared to be lynched alive, would have been alive today. Because he did not allow the dirty elite to get their way. He tried to end the unconstitutional foreign invasions. He tried to mediate peace as a president wherever he could. I am a Muslim. I wear a hijab. I know he has said things about Muslims, but he did not bomb Muslims like Obama did, like Bill Clinton did, like George Bush did. He has the least amount of carnage on his hands. He tried to end these endless wars that the US is being dragged into to satisfy a hungry, thirsty, bloodthirsty corporate elite of military industrial complex. I came here multiple times warning you that if you do not stand up against your corrupt governments, 
the fire is going to come hit your own house and guess what happened more happened when you allow the lawless to go rogue undeterred unchecked against the constitution of the united states your own children become a bait One thousand children gone missing. Who is responsible? Biden goes there after thirteen days and is found sleeping. And he talks about his cat. He compares those children to his cat and to his car. He compares. Those missing children feared lynched alive to his cat and to his car. If this is not enough to tell you that Biden has no soul, I don't know what you're going to be able to come up with to get convinced that this guy has no soul. He has been standing by every war criminal to date he launched a war that could have easily evolved into world war 3 because he wanted to appease his investors ukraine is a nuclear flashpoint kashmir is a nuclear flashpoint Why is Biden administration going to Sirinaga, a disputed territory, rendered disputed not by me, not by you, but by the United Nations? A disputed territory of conflict stays disputed even if your president decides to override the United Nations resolutions. and as american people of a free democracy that you claim to have which you don't have it is your basic right to be able to tell him that no more if you shut your eyes up to kashmir we are talking about an imminent apocalypse It's a nuclear flashpoint and the only reason an apocalypse has not happened as yet is because of the de-escalation policies of Pakistan. Pakistan has played as a beacon of peace, always trying to promote peace, always trying to de-escalate tensions, and this is why the world has yet to see an apocalypse. Otherwise, the ultra radical BJP being run by the fanatics of RSS who think raping muslim women will give heaven to the activists if you left the world to the devices of these terrorists god knows what would have happened they are happy about India landing on moon but you know what it is not just India that has landed on moon it is the military boots of RSS a designated terrorist faction that has been allowed to land on moon thanks to the Biden administration Biden is so obsessed with winning the next year's elections that he has not just arrested Donald Trump illegally trying to eliminate complete opposition to his next year's run he has also stopped over every international charter of law he has stood by every war criminal like modi who is being designated and labeled as the butcher of gujarat internationally He wants Modi's cooperation 
in the South China Sea. But guess what? When Ukraine happened, do you know what Modi did? Modi empowered Russia against US and Ukraine. Does anybody tell you this on mainstream media? No. They don't want you to know that the Indian government that was allowed to land on the moon with its military boots of RSS, a designated terrorist faction, it was allowed by Biden administration, the same administration that looked away when Modi was kissing the feet of Putin against US in Ukraine. A friend in need is a friend in need. But when your friend becomes a friend of your enemy in a state of war, you should have the common sense to know which one is your friend and which one is your enemy. You are at war with Russia in Ukraine and you're trying to appease India by going to Indian occupied Kashmir against the UN resolutions for G20. You're allowing them to land their military terrorist boots on the ground on the moon. You could have stopped this. India has satellites armed with nuclear weapons in the space now, thanks to the Biden administration. Now you have empowered India to such an extent that when these radical terrorist fanatics try to bring an apocalypse, even Pakistan won't be able to do anything about it because we do not have access globally. There are only four countries that have space power. Who made India the space power? You did. Your government did. Pakistan and the rivals of India are not space powers. So a damage of mass destruction has been committed by the US government just because they want to win the next year's elections. First, they eliminate the entire political opposition by arresting one of the most popular leaders of the American people. Second, they try to stage another war in South China Sea by greasing the palms of an entity like India that has always supported the rivals of US when the time of need has come, just as we saw in Ukraine. Biden wants a war against China and he wants it not because he wants to bring freedom and democracy in the world. He wants it because he wants to stage fear in your hearts next year when you're ready to cast your votes. That yes, we are engaged in Ukraine. Yes, we are engaged in South China Sea. We're engaged in two World War III level wars. We cannot afford to have a leader other than Biden. This is the political strategy of your cult that you call your government. This is why they are greasing the palms of those who did not stand by you when Ukraine happened, who were disallowed from entering your country because they killed people alive in Gujarat. I'm talking about Modi. This is why the RSS terrorist faction that believes in killing all Muslims, all Christians, all Dalits, all Sikhs, until and unless they convert to Hinduism. This is why that RSS terrorist faction was allowed 
by the Biden administration to put its boots on the moon, its military boots on the moon the other day. This is why Biden administration is willing to thrash the UN resolutions on Kashmir by committing to attend the G20 summit that has been unconstitutionally planned to be staged in the Indian occupied Kashmir by India. Imagine if North Korea had its boots, military boots on the moon today, or its satellites armed with nukes and lethal weapons. How would you react? Do you think that India could not use its space arsenal against the US? Think again. When Ukraine happened, India showed whose side it was on. It was not on the side of the United States. It empowered and encouraged Putin against the US. And now your own evil government is allowing India to land its military boots on the moon. Your own evil government who just lynched your kids alive in Moi is trying to thrash all UN resolutions by committing to go to G20 in Indian occupied Kashmir. Has China attacked US as yet? No. China has yet to attack US. But China has been created as a weapon of fear by the military industrial complex and by the evil government to stage another war that can be totally avoided. And the reason why Donald Trump was arrested the other days because he could have stopped all these wars. Yes, Trump was against China. Yes, Trump tried to fight China diplomatically. He tried to fight China on the basis of trade, but he never ever tried to escalate violence and convert South China Sea into a nuclear flashpoint. This is all against the policies of the current ruling regime who have been converting one territory after another into nuclear flashpoints. Who have destabilized the world more than any other government in the history of US. Ukraine is a nuclear flashpoint who launched the Ukraine war. South China Sea is a nuclear flashpoint who launched South China Sea war. Kashmir is a nuclear flashpoint who is trying to instigate this nuclear flashpoint by going and endorsing the Indian occupation of Kashmir by attending G20. People of Kashmir in number of millions stay in a brutal siege of the Indian army. Do you know that for every four Kashmiris, there's one Indian soldier in the Indian occupied Kashmir, where Biden just committed his complete endorsement. When you need one soldier to control four people, every fourth person in a territory, that is not a democracy. 
That is occupation, military occupation, unless proven otherwise. I challenge India that if India claims that Indian occupied Kashmir is its lawful democratic territory, I challenge India to remove all of its military boots from the land of Sirinagar and its urban and its rural suburbs. India will never do that. You know why? Because when the United Nations processed and passed this resolution that Kashmir's future is going to be decided by the people of Kashmir, India decided to violate that resolution that very day. India does not want the people of Kashmir to make a decision about their land and territory as per the United Nations resolution. India wants military occupation, Probably imperialism. India, India wants human rights violations. And your president is standing by India right now in Indian occupied Kashmir, willing to violate the United Nations resolutions, willing to go to any length because he has been told by his political strategists that if he wants to win the war, win the elections next year, he has to stage not just one war in Ukraine, he has to stage another war in South China Sea so that the American people are fearful enough to vote for him next year. Donald Trump is not perfect. He has his own baggage, but he is undoubtedly a better American than Biden. And if you're going to watch his illegal detention go undeterred, you're going to have many more moys. You're going to have many more American children get lynched alive to satisfy the greed of the corporate elite who have been running amok since the Biden administration came. Ukraine war got escalated to fill up the banks of Raytheon, Lockheed, at the cost of your economy, your livelihoods, your future. Homelessness is on the rise in the US. Today, the gas price is worse than before. People are going poor from being in the middle class in the US. Poverty is escalating. As Biden escalates its, his wars to make his investors happy. U.S. is in a state of communism where you cannot go against your government. You cannot say anything against your government or you will be persecuted indirectly. I don't know if I'll be able to come back here tomorrow because I may be persecuted. I may be shut down. But this is your chance to try to stop another moi from happening again to tell your government to go to hell, to tell them to abide by the US Constitution, to tell them to abide by the International Charter, to tell them to respect the International United Nations resolutions in Kashmir. If Biden commits violation of the UN resolution in Kashmir, what's the guarantee that he is not committing lawlessness within U.S. Ukraine can be settled in one week. South China Sea conflict can be settled in one week. But we need leadership that wants to settle these conflicts. We do not want a leadership that wants to use endless wars as a weapon of mass destruction, not just against the world, but the American people themselves, just in a bid to win the next election. That is inhumane. That is unethical. 
That is pure, epic evil. What happened in Moi was evil. 1,000 children, not 10 children, not 100 children, not 500 children, 1,000 children found to be missing in Moi in a bid to grab the land of those children. They did it in Iraq. They did it in Afghanistan. They did it in Pakistan. They did it in Yemen. They did it in Syria. They did it in Libya. And now they're doing it in the United States of America. God bless all of you, my American brothers and children and sisters. Have a good day. Bye-bye.